Welcome back to Dr. Mark and Cindy Lynn Stadium. Matt Schumacher, Jeff Greer with you. Louisville, Evansville, a rematch from a match that went all the way to almost the 90th minute last year and for Louisville to gain victory. Cards in the home white, purple aces in the purple, and we are underway from the Derby City. A look at the Evansville purple aces starting lineup. Landon Amick making his first college start tonight in goal because his training partner, Alex Vizioni, the starting keeper all season long, out due to a red card accumulation against Bradley. Heck of a place to get your first college start <laughs> against a top 11 team in Louisville. Yeah. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to your experience <laughs> as a college goalkeeper. He's only played seven minutes of college soccer. He redshirted last year. So he was on the bench when these Purple Aces held a one-goal lead all the way to the 86th minute against Louisville before the cards pinged two home in two minutes. And that's why we talked about a faster start for Louisville tonight. They are so good at creating chances, and they've got to figure out ways to get Evansville's defenders isolated and take care of those early chances and get on that front foot and really put this game in their firm control. It was uh, a wacky match. I mean, Louisville outshot Evansville 20 to five. Purple Aces had one shot on goal. It's all they needed until the 86 minute. The card score on a set piece, and then two minutes later, it was Abu Kamara putting away a ball that this Evansville coaching staff believes should have been cleared away. Well, they also believe that they are in a much better position defensively this year. They feel like they've done a much better job of limiting, limiting space. They're better 1v1 defenders, all of those things that are critically important for a matchup like this. But you've got to find ways to also be able to spring the ball forward like this and, and maybe be a threat. Rafaelo Colosito was looking ahead for Nicozi Graham. As we check in on the Louisville starting 11, Abu Kamara up top, Ryan Troutman back in goal. He has solidified himself as the starting keeper. We feel Jeff, this team on a six-match unbeaten streak, three clean sheets during that stretch. Yeah, he's been really, really strong for Louisville. And coming into the season, this is what John Michael Hayden thought it would be like, that it, he said it was a difficult decision. Uh, picking his starting goalkeeper. We know what Gavin Kornecki can do as well. And uh, it's, a, it's a tough choice, but you got to go with the hot hand, and, and Troutman has done that. There is John Michael Hayden. Best record at this point in the season since he took over as the head coach three and a half years ago. His club now ranked 11th in the country. And they are staring down quite a finishing schedule with both Syracuse and Clemson at home in the next two weeks. Plus tough midweek matchups against Evansville and East Tennessee State next week. Yeah, and a road game at number four, Wake Forest. Can't to forget top it that. All off. I mean, this is <laughs> this is uh, always a murderer's row in the ACC, but Louisville has really scheduled difficult non-conference games as well. And on the other side for the Evansville Purple Aces, Marshall Ray, his club 4-2-4. Four, four. They have tied the last two matches with no goals conceded and no goals scored. Although he told us, Jeff, that he felt like there were plenty of opportunities against Bradley, one off the crossbar, one off the post. His team feels like they're due for a goal here tonight. Yeah, you got to create your own luck, and, and feeling unlucky in those games will always still help you come into the next game thinking, surely if we just keep doing what we're doing that's been working, we'll find some success. And uh, knowing how last year's game went with some of these returning guys, surely they'll feel confident coming in here that they can cause at least uh, Louisville to think twice about cop walking into this game and, and strolling to victory. Eight starters returned from that team last year.
Evansville just sort of hung around, hung around in that match. The first 45 minutes ended nil-nil, and then out of the second half gates, Evansville on the board first. Makumba Ba is steered away by Ethan Garvey, the 6'7 senior from New Orleans, Louisiana. Well, he was aided there, Makumba Ba's heavy first touch, but that was a great example of how dangerous Louisville can be quickly because there is a lot of space and Makumba Ba can really get into it quickly. So alert defending from Evansville, and we just saw it again surrounding Ba when he got the ball. But they've just got to be mindful in behind those wing backs if they're too high up the pitch. And Louisville's got the pace and the ability to get in there quickly. It's one of the great challenges, Matt, when you play a back three, you don't want it to look like a back five because it means your width is being negated. But you also have to be really careful that your wing backs aren't getting exposed too high up the field by the, opposer, the opponent that can get into that space and exploit it with pace and good passing. Ba has some space here on the left side. Now Sonder Road tied for the ACC lead with six assists already this season. Louisville coming off back-to-back -back victories in shutout fashion on the road against NC State and Notre Dame. John Michael Hayden feels like that pit match in which the Cards won 2-1 to one against the top 10 Panthers side was the turning point. It was the first time they had played uh, almost a complete match this season, playing their brand of soccer. And, man, that has just carried them through now almost to the end, or to the middle, rather, of October. Well, it, this is a team that has so much experience this year playing in tight games, eight of the last nine, either draws or decided by one goal margin. And uh, for Louisville to come out on top of a lot of those games is a sign of, of where they have, how they have grown as a group and, and the understanding to play that complete 90 minutes uh, is going to benefit them significantly once they get to the NCAA tournament in the, in the ACC postseason. Is Lynn Peck Center our referee tonight? Felt like Eric Dankwood was a little too quick on the restart, and so now Saunder Road stands over it. Many white jerseys ahead on the edge of the 18. Our first look at Ryan Troutman tonight. Back-to-back -back clean sheets for him in his first season for Louisville. Transferring over from the University of Kentucky after three seasons at Bowling Green. And he is a prime example of the depth that John Michael Hayden has been preaching all season long. Now we see it at all four levels, from goalkeeper all the way up to the front three. Yeah, this is a much deeper team than it was a year ago, and that has come partly through experience, and it's come partly through additions that have experience. So uh, it's a nice collection of talent that Louisville has, and they feel much better suited for the long grind of a season uh, to then be able to turn it back on in the NCAA tournament. I shouldn't say it back on, but continue to play well into the NCAA tournament and not feel like you're running out of gas. Well, it gives you the opportunity, too, to maybe not play your starters, heavy minutes in midweek matchups. Here is Makumba Ba on the left side of the box. Trying to slip it in to Abu Kamara and poked away. Yeah, I'm, I'm very intrigued to see how much time some of the others uh, on this roster, the younger guys, can get in here. And that's why they got to score early, I think, for Louisville. That's how you benefit the rest of your team. So Makuma Ba, good idea there, just 
Kamara's run hadn't arrived there, but just get yourself the opportunity to use some of your younger fellas by scoring early and, and taking some of the edge off this game. Jorga lead ace to Philip Fred Hall, one of five freshmen playing significant minutes this year. Slipped in to Eric Denkwa and just left to the post. It's really good from Fred Hall and what Louisville's fullbacks really want to be able to do is get all the way up to that end line. He had a couple options. He went for that drag back diagonal and Denkwa just unlucky there that there was a defender. And you could see he recognized immediately with the reaction. You can always tell from the reaction if they know it's a good chance. And I think he knows that one just went begging. Sonder Road on the service, back post. First action of the night for Landon Amick. And if you're just joining us, Landon Amick making his first collegiate start tonight in place of Alex Vizioni. Out tonight due to a red card against Bradley. Patrick Adukevich starting at left back tonight for the cards with the throw. can see here, Matt, in his first few minutes, Evansville has a couple of times tried this right flank through ball that they think that there's something there for Graham coming down that near right side. And it just hasn't quite always clicked for them, but they've got to be a little bit tidier here to try to open up Louisville, especially in the counterattack. They've been smart to stop if, they're, if it's not there, but I'd love to see them try to be a little bit more aggressive and more direct on the counter to see if they can catch Louisville out. Barcia try to backfield, back heel flip to Colosito. Primary goal scorer this year has been Nacho Diaz, number 20 in purple. Hasn't really touched the ball much yet in these opening 15 minutes, but he has seven goals in the first 10 matches. Top 20 in the country this year so far. One of five Spaniards on the roster this season and an, you know, one of over 20 underclassmen on this roster. 15 of them freshmen this year for Marshall Ray. Well, we've got so many young guys and they're still having a really strong season. Normally you have to work through the kinks a little bit and they're looking like a team that is gonna be formidable in league play the rest of the way and, and be a, a real difficult opponent for Louisville tonight. Adukevich. Sample heading it back in. Now Dankwa twisting towards the 18. Dankwa still And Jorgalide is trying to win it back for the cards. Cannot. Lots of pressure. Sample right into the midst of Amick. I love that for Brad Sample stepping forward. Acknowledging the space in front of him needs to be filled. That's a really good number six there. Understanding what's in front of him and knowing when to go and when to hold his position. And almost rewarded there with the interception into a shot. Sample has two assists in the last three matches. He's a very underrated aspect of this Louisville squad, that's for sure. Here is Makumba Ba. I had to get a little bit tricky there, but nothing doing against Ethan Garvey. So 
Something else to keep an eye on tonight for Evansville. Starting keeper making his first collegiate start. He's a redshirt freshman. Starting center back, a true freshman in the form of Mark Vila, also from Spain. Chargalides out of play and a Louisville corner. He's so tricky on that outside flank, but really good discipline defending. Do not let him get that cross in. Good job there from Varela out, out wide. They don't want to get too often into those 1v1 situations, but he had some support behind him that gave him the confidence to defend. Adukavic will take this corner. Jorgalide is playing short. Adukavic, of course, missed the first handful of matches, worked slowly back into the lineup starting tonight. Now Sonder Road out of the wing, trying to stop a counterattack. And he does. Cards win it back. It has been all Louisville here in the first 15 minutes. Another match to keep an eye on tonight. Number 10, Wake Forest in a midweek matchup with William and Mary tied 1-1 in the opening minutes of the second half. Wake Forest has trailed most of that game. So they got to go back on William and Mary. <laughs> that's, uh, that's always a tough aspect in all of this is you're in the midst of league play and you've got to get up for these games that are midweek and you're trying to rotate your team, but you still have to be alert and understand that there's a big target on your back when you're playing these midweek non-conference games. Kamara. Adukavic wins it back. Akuma Ba just a little bit out of the reach of that pass. Just saw Matt walking in, a guy that I think Louisville would love to see suit back up for them. Pedro Fonseca joining the crowd here. An electric playmaker for the cards. Well, you know, they, they do say that Constantinos Jorgalides is Fonseca 2.0. <laughs> so at least they replaced him with an incredible talent in Jorgalides. Three yeah. goals, two assists to his name in his first season. There's an abundance of creators on this team. Akumba Ba skying to keep that ball in play. Fred All. Madukevich chipped forward. Pretty ball there to Dankwa. Oh, now Dankwa weaving past the defense. Dankwa slips it into Ba. Chance there for Abu Kamara. And now perhaps a counterattack opportunity for Evansville. Slipped through, Nacho Diaz and turned away by the big fella, Josh Jones. That's an area where Louisville has gotten better this year. They, they struggled uh, defending set pieces. They also struggled getting caught out a little bit. They've been better about being physical and just disruptive enough. That's all you really need to be when you're trying to get back and defend on the counter. Here's a ball to Nikozi Graham, and the flag stayed down on that pass. That was a tricky <laughs> opportunity there. Now Barcia. Liverpool switching off a little bit here the last couple minutes. They've got to figure out how to get back on the ball and, and be a little bit more disciplined.
for Louisville lately, the best defense has been a really good offense. I mean, they have controlled possession, pace, tempo against most of these teams that they have played over the last six matches, particularly in the last two against Notre Dame and NC State, which resulted in a combined score of 3-0. Yeah, and it's excellent defending. This is a team that struggled defending last year, struggled keeping people out. And they have done a much better job of clamping things down. That was quite the incident here. And Eric Denqua is down. It looks to be his lower back. It was an awkward fall for him, but Evansville not happy about the whistle. Neither is Marshall Ray. Barcia, <laughs> he was awfully close to getting a booking there in the after the fact conversation with Islan Peck Center. Well, I, I think if you're Evansville, your argument is he got to the ball first and he's already in a prone position and the player is trying to jump over you and gets caught. But if you're Louisville, you're saying, yeah, but his leg swung through and he caught. But honestly, it's a, it's a hard argument. I mean, it, it's one of those things that, honestly, if you told me the call was made in the other direction, I would say, or no call, I would say that's fine too. It's, it's, that's the beauty of this sport. And there's probably people listening who are like, that guy is an idiot. That was clearly a foul or that clearly was not a foul. And that's, that's part of all of this. It's subjective. Well, you're protected up here in the booth. Yeah, I am. There's Pedro Fonseca with the uh, thumbs up. Drafted by Real Salt Lake in February. And uh, what a terrific career he had for the cards over three seasons. I mean, last season was... Another level. All ACC performer. Just go back to thinking about guys like that just move at a different pace than everybody else. And he just was wired to just get the ball wherever he was, and he was immediately into creator mode. Such a fun player. Colasito trying to twist it back in for Nicozy Graham. And then Evan Decker sends it into the third row of seats. It's interesting. Louisville have had so many new faces over the last two to three seasons. I mean, you look at what John Michael Hayden has had to do. He really built this team from 20 underclassmen in 2020, which had its own challenges with COVID and the split season and all of that, injuries to boot. Replacing players along the way like Pedro Fonseca. But this is what it has culminated in, Jeff, a top 15 team in Louisville whose only losses this year to Duke, a top five team now. And of course, Kentucky, a top five team at the time. Well, and it, it, it comes from repetition and getting the opportunities to play. We talked a lot about guys who either came in early to play in the spring, and that's part of why, even though it was such a difficult year, uh, to be able to have guys come in a little early and get that experience and then have the summer and build into the season last year was, was huge. Uh, so this is a group that has gotten so many reps to the point that they're comfortable and confident within the rigors of the system to know when they can do different things and, and get creative. And that just comes from that organic process of just playing and playing and playing and learning as a group. And playing even maybe when you're not ready because yes, you have going to. going through your lumps, taking your lumps. And they know they took a bunch. Even last year with a good season, they took some lumps. And that all has really prepared them for what this season has become. Here is the Kentucky transfer, Brennan McManus coming on for Abu Kamara. McManus, two goals in his second season in a Louisville uniform. Local 
product here right out of Louisville, Kentucky. Adekavich. Now a run from Nikozi Graham. Nacho Diaz trying to get on the other end of it. Now Barcia spinning away out to Colosito. And towards goal, Ryan Troutman plays it easily. Some really nice navigation there from Barcia through traffic. But Louisville doing a good job of recognizing immediately the threat and throwing a bunch of bodies back. That's something that they've done really well this season. And a foul against Evansville on the entry pass. Bradley Sample will stand up. Shuffle ahead and a restart coming. Bryce LaBelle to get us going again. Nico Diaz and John, Damian Barker, John rather, getting set to come onto the pitch. A couple of substitutions here midway through this first half. Good run from Adukevich, punted away. And now Diaz and Barker John will come on. Well, you know how I feel about <laughs> Damian Barker John. I think this kid is electric. Yeah. And this is a great opportunity for Louisville. It, it, it had kind of gotten stale the last few minutes for the cards after a, a promising start of, of exposing some space. And bringing on both Diaz and Barker John is going to help them maybe spread things out a little bit more. Marker John, not highly recruited. Louisville got to him earlier than most, particularly at the Power Five level. And John Michael Hayden told us early in the year, he just fits the system so perfectly. Here is Marker John with the turnover. Marker John, nothing from the referee. Now perhaps a whistle, but no bookings. <laughs> little sparks flying. That's what he does. He comes on the field and he just gets the ball at his feet and he just sends sparks flying. Now let's see here. Of course, the defenders respecting him. Probably took one too many touches. I don't think that's a penalty just because the touch right before it was heavy and into an area that he would not have been able to recover it. But still, just the ability to get there and be dangerous is something that this kid can bring to Louisville every time he's on the field. Now an opportunity for Evansville, Barcia. Deflected it away, Barker John clears it out. Dankwa, lots of space, so dangerous in these moments. Nico Diaz, touched aside by Colosito. A run from Nicozy Graham. Bryce LaBelle gets in his way, plays it back to Troutman.
Kai Phillip will now come on for Nikozi Graham, who is just an electric player up top for Evansville. And then David Bacuzzo, who has just routinely gotten more and more playing time off the bench. And Bacuzzo did have a goal against NC State. It was his first goal of the season. So he is coming into form here midway through the fall. And that's one area that I've, I've been kind of wondering if Louisville is going to need to find more depth uh, beyond that starting three in the midfield. And Bacuzzo just gives you that solidity. He's a good defensive player. And uh, yeah, some goal scoring is nice. <laughs> it just kind of goes back to your point about John Michael Hayden, the depth of this team. Feels like he can rotate players in and out and not lose a step. And more than that, shake things up. Play a little bit differently. Make the defense adjust. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what this is all about. You, when you build depth, it's not just a number of bodies to fit exactly what you want. It's also a bunch of bodies that have some different attributes and traits. They're all human beings. They're all different players, and they can give you that versatility. Moment now for Barker. John pings it off the post. And he'll want that one back. A couple of near misses in this first half now for the Cards. The type of play that just mortifies a coach. I mean, that ball just ran along the entire goal line. Good goalkeeping to get a finger to it. But Damian Barker, John, good contacts. And they talked about a little bit of unlucky efforts on the attacking end for Evansville recently. Well, they got a little luck defensively there. Saved by the woodwork. Does have a goal already this season, does Barker, John. I have a feeling he'll have a couple more chances here tonight with the way that this match has gone. Louisville has had lots of space, hasn't amounted to much, but you would think at some point in time that finishing touch would emerge. Yeah, these, these subs have come on here in this front three and given them a little something different, and it sure seems like they're getting that confidence back that was fading a little bit before they came on. But give Evansville credit. So far, they've figured out how to just do enough to keep Louisville at bay. This has a similar feel to the match that these two played a season ago. Louisville out shooting Evansville by 15. Now Barker John again. Rebound opportunity cleared away by Evan Decker. <laughs> what did I tell you? This kid is absolutely electric. Great first touch. And really got a lot of power. It was a tight angle, but still really good stuff. Look at this, Matt. What a first touch this is. Mm. Gets it into his path. Second touch was really good, too. And again, tight angle. He's got a runner there. I think McManus was saying, hey, maybe play that across. But still, just a really smart player, DBJ. I'm going to start calling him that, DBJ. <laughs> Electric talent. Freshman out of Queens, New York. Here is Adukevich. Trying to link up with Josh Jones, the 6'5", former All-State Hooper from the state of Pennsylvania. Now uh, Bacuzzo serves it back in. Adukevich on the back end. Parker John. Wins it back for Louisville. Evansville bending a little bit more than we saw in the opening 15, 25 minutes of this half. Louisville have had some more chances. Here's another look at that foul. 
Not a whole lot there, but Barker John gets it back for Louisville nonetheless, and it's a restart opportunity for Anikavic. Not only is he a tricky player, that was a really good usage of his body to get in between the defender and the ball and win that. 11 minutes left in the opening half. This match was tied 0-0 going into the halftime locker room a season ago. Adukevich trying to end that. And once again cleared away. Fred Hall zips it back ahead. And finally, some breathing room for the Purple Aces. Well, that was also just a, a, a smart play there to take the contact, absorb it, win the foul, and relieve some pressure here, catch your breath. But if you're Louisville, you're feeling like something's coming here, just fighting against those final 10 minutes on the clock. Nacho Diaz will come off. And Tancredi Fada will come on, the freshman from Italy. So their top goal scorer coming off. Interesting move here in the closing 10 minutes of the first half. Well, it gives them a little bit of some size up front. They haven't been able to get in behind Evansville, but this will force Louisville to think a little bit differently defensively. But... Also, how about a uh, shout out to uh, Monza, Italy, a home of uh, Formula One racing. <laughs> home of uh, a very important aspect of it. You would know that. I would. Drive to survive, man. That is, uh, that's quite the series. You can watch that after this match concludes tonight. <laughs> I will. That is in the plans. Brown leading Boston College. Out in uh, Chestnut Hill, 1-0. Still some time left here in the first half out east. And these midweek matches are always tricky, right? Because the ACC is so tough. Six teams in the top 25 regularly throughout the season, sometimes more. And it's a grind of a season. It absolutely is. And don't sleep on the Ivy League schools. They got some talent in that league. Spent a lot of time when I was a kid as a corner here for Louisville coming up. Watching my brother's alma mater, Brown. He didn't play for them, but he would take us to their games. High quality soccer in the yeah. Ivy League. Yeah. A lot of talent. All right, so the fifth corner of the night for the Cards. Trying to break this scoreless tie. Was a good flick there from Bradley Sample. Nobody home though, back post. Diaz tracks it down, keeps it in. McManus, the one timer, locked away by the freshman, Landon Amick. How about the young fella? Seeing the forest through the trees get down quickly. That was really well struck, too, from McManus. And that is a very, very good save to build on the rest of this game. Marshall Wright told us he felt like Am Amick was going to be the guy in the next couple of seasons. Sprung into action tonight. Back post, and it skirts wide. LaBelle was right there, ball at his feet. Couldn't quite get his toe on it. And I think Amick, the kid from Vegas, taking a gamble coming off his line there. Poke it away, look at this. I'm pretty sure, yeah, he got a paw on it. And he had to. That's, uh, that's good goalkeeper. Rising to the occasion in his first collegiate start against a top 15 side that hasn't lost since early September. For the Cards, you got to go all the way back to their loss against Duke on this field September the 10th. It's been exactly 
a month since this team has tasted defeat. Six in a row without a loss. Four wins. And back-to-back -back shutout victories over NC State and Notre Dame. Alu Wagner comes on for John Varela. Another freshman. This one out of Germany. Wagner, one of 15 true freshmen on this roster. And a great chance to help the Purple Aces here finish this half. If you go in at halftime 0-0, the way this game is played out, you're pretty happy if you're Evansville. Same thing we saw last year, right? An opportunity to regroup at the halftime break. Down goes Decker, and the official is pointed to the spot. Penalty opportunity for the Purple Aces here with a shade over five minutes left in the first half. Well, you bide your time, you bide your time defensively, and you try to spring a counterattack. And just, it, it's difficult when you're the team on the front foot, your defenders having to come back. That's how things get out of hand in, a, in just a split second there. And yeah, I mean, uh, Fada getting that one touch. Ah, that's tough, but I, I think that's the right call. He just got the one touch out from Jones, and Jones sticks the foot out. The referee had some help from his assistant referee, and now this is a big moment in this game. Oliver Hall, who does not have a goal yet this year for Evansville, will take the penalty kick. Ryan Troutman in goal for Louisville. Coming off back-to-back -back clean sheets. Here's Hall. And it's saved! What a stop! Ryan Troutman keeps it a nil-nil game. Well, if you're Louisville, that's a that's the quintessential ball don't lie moment. You didn't think it was a penalty? Well, your goalkeeper stopped it. And if you're Evansville, you cannot get shaken by that. You gotta figure out a way to keep fighting and see if you can get another opportunity against the run of play. Stopped it on the doorstep. Looked like he might have pinned it against the post as well. Really good goalkeeper. I'm excited to see that again. I mean, just a really, really good save from Troutman. We know he's a good shot stopper, but that's also requires scouting and a good guess. He's trying to keep that streak of clean sheets alive. Here's another look at it. Yep, I mean, read it all the way. And I think when, you, when you're a goalkeeper, when you're a goalkeeper right there, you notice he's starting to open his hips. I mean, that is telegraphing exactly where it's going. It's a, it's a nanosecond. It's not a split second. It's a nanosecond for the goalkeeper. But if you have quick reflexes, you can see that and know where you need to go. Great save. Now Vivas. Jose Vivas, a tricky player, also from Spain. And it's out of play and back to the cards. If you ever, go ahead, Matt, sorry. Well, he was just the freshman of the year last year of the MVC, one of their talented players. Yeah, they've got a lot of them. But the thing I was going to say is this is why you see a lot of penalty takers now do them straight on. Because if you, if you show yourself a little bit too much a goalkeeper who's smart, like Troutman, they'll be able to quickly react to that and connect their body to their brain in a way that they can get over to where they need to get over so quickly. Makes you wonder too about that decision to sub off Nacho Diaz. He probably would have been the one to take that penalty. He's a top 20 scorer in the country. Yeah, and he's, he's a little bit smaller too. It would be maybe a little bit less telegraph. I, I don't know, it's hard to say, but <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's a, could potentially be I a I think you're just moment. making a case for the little guy right now. <laughs> you know me. All right, three minutes left here. The first corner of the night for Evansville. And punched away by Troutman. A couple of excellent stops here late in the first half, and it's back to the cards. There is Nacho Diaz right there. Strong fist, Matt. Two goalkeepers who have played very, very well in this first half. We certainly have seen the freshman, Landon Amick, standing tall. 
He's played seven minutes of college soccer in his career. That was last week against Bradley because the starter, Vizioni, went out with a late red card. You can't tell from the first 45 no. minutes the way that the way Amick has played. That kid has been excellent. Troutman's been excellent. It's been a really fun night for fans of good goalkeepers. Evansville's flipped this a little bit. It was lots of Louisville, although nothing to show for it for the first 30, 35 minutes. Lately, Evansville has given Troutman some tests. Two goalkeepers from two gambling power centers in the United States, Louisville and Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, don't yeah, you, Jeff? Yeah, well, we're only a uh, stone's throw away from Churchill Downs. Danqua into the middle for Bacuzzo. Diaz. Now Sample trying to chip it ahead. He was looking for Brandon McManus. Nothing there, and Hauled clears it away momentarily. Final 60 seconds of the first half. One minute remaining. If you were to bet on adjustments in the second half, what would you say? Well, I think Louisville's got to figure out a way to, to continuously get into those wide areas because they've been able to get some success with their either overlapping fullbacks or guys like Damian Barker John or George Alitas, Makumba Ba, but they've gotten away from it at times, and um, I, I think that has shown that they might be able to generate more chances. And that's the biggest adjustment for them. If you're Evansville, look, you're probably pretty happy defensively. And just keep up the effort there, and, and you just got to be sharp on your counters and see if you can get another chance. Just has such a similar feeling to the match that we had last year between these two teams, a match in which Evansville and Louisville went into the halftime locker room, nodded at nil-nil. Tonight, same story. Although Evansville does have a missed PK saved by that man, Ryan Troutman, to keep the game level. The younger guys, but this is a group that believes that it can be disruptive and, and come in here and maybe get a result, and, and that's exactly what these 45 minutes could portend for the visiting Purple Aces. Ryan Troutman out of the halftime locker room after stopping that penalty kick from Evansville in the final five minutes to keep it scoreless. Aces will get it to start the second half. Their man, Landon Amick, the freshman from Las Vegas, Nevada, four saves in that first half. A couple of them were major saves, keeping the ball out of the back of the net for the cards. Keepers have been the storyline so far. took Louisville to the 86th minute a season ago to score against this Evansville team. It was Saunder Road off a set piece, and then two minutes later, Abu Kamara on a ball that wasn't cleared, got it at his foot, put it home, and that was the one that sealed the deal. Cards 10-4 and four all time against Evansville. Not exactly a local derby, but these two schools not separated by much. Less than two hours between these two programs. The war down I-64. There you go. <laughs> or something. Something along those lines. That sounds right. Kamara back to start the second half. He and Brandon McManus all season long have been trading at that number nine spot. Bacuzzo edged off the ball. What'd you make of Louisville's attack overall in those first 45 minutes? Yeah, I mean, I thought they generated some chances. There's some good goalkeeping, but 
Uh, they certainly had their opportunities. They just have to be tidier in, in front of the frame. Wagner pushed aside by Philip Fredhall. Certainly does not feel like 70 degrees. I was going to say, that seems generous to say the least. You got a little chill going up I'm, here. I'm, a bit. I'm cold. <laughs> I am cold. I love the fall, and it's, it's great to play in. This is a this is the perfect environment to play mm. a soccer game in because you're running, obviously sweating quite a bit. It's it's nice to play in a chillier environment, but for those of us who are not running around, <laughs> in an open air booth, in an open air booth where the AC is on, it's a little chilly. Maybe that's chilly. why it's a little colder in here <laughs> than 70 degrees. Well, I'll tell you who hasn't been cold, Matt. The goalkeepers. There you go. Excellent first half and excited to see these guys work through the second half. Well, we knew what to expect from Ryan Troutman, right? When he got his opportunity a few weeks back against Florida Gulf Coast, he was outstanding and then it just kind of continued and him getting into this starting lineup coincided with the team going on a six match unbeaten streak. Boy, well, did not know what to expect from Landon Amick. He's only played seven minutes in his college career before tonight. He's been terrific. It's kind of like the uh, for Louisville, it's kind of like a lot of the times NHL teams, a, a, a goalie will get hot. And maybe it's not the goalie you thought it would be uh, in your in the back of the frame um, going into the postseason that just stays there and carries you through the postseason. So Troutman has been a difference maker for the Cards. And they have the luxury of having legitimately two power five starting keepers. Oh, Kronecki is excellent rotating. too. Yeah. Slipped ahead for Kamara. Haven't seen him on the end of the ball too much. And the offside flag comes up. Yeah, Abu Kamara a little antsy there. He's not really been all that connected today, which is a tough thing for Louisville. And he just just ever so slightly was off there. He's riding a bit of a drought for him. Three matches without a goal for the top returning goal scorer amongst Power 5 teams. Stuck on three goals for the season right now. Great takeaway by Philip Fredall. And he's ahead to Kamara who has some space. It was well played. And Mark Vila. Diaz wins it back. Road out wide for Makumba Ba. That's why you bring in a guy like Fada, we we're talking about in the first half, his ability to shield off defenders, hold up possession, and now Evansville can stay on the ball a little bit longer. And the flag comes up on Tancredi Fada, the freshman from Italy who replaced Nacho Diaz at the end of the first half. Yeah, he's not, uh, he's not so sure about that call, and, and it looked like they timed it up right, but obviously I don't have the line that the AR had there, but a couple of good, dangerous goal-scoring threats just slightly off the last minute or two. Huge upset in the ACC. William and Mary goes to Wake Forest, takes down the Demon Deacons 2-1. Your thoughts? Well, you see it right there. Wake Forest 1-3 and three in its last four after such a strong start. But it's a big win for William and Mary. And one of the oldest schools in the country getting a little uh, notch for its season. That's a nice win for them. 
Just an interesting turn in the year for Wake Forest, who started out so well, 9-0 and through the first nine matches. But you can expect the Demon Deacons at some point to find their footing again ahead of the postseason. I mean, it's just they always do. Yeah, I was going to say, they'll be fine. They'll, they'll figure it out. <laughs> they got time. Wagner wins a foul. I believe it'll go against Philip Fredhall. And a restart in a dangerous area for Evansville. Well, Fred Hall, you know, I think he probably, based on where they were, felt a little isolated defensively, but he did not need to pull on the jersey there. He had help arriving behind him, or guys at least in a spot that they could defend for him. But this is, as you said, Matt, this is a really good spot. Might be close enough to have a shot here. It's a tough angle, but you also have that back post opportunity to deliver a, a good ball into some space, and you've got some big bodies up on that front line for Evansville. It is Barcia and Hald, the man who had his penalty saved in the first half, standing over the ball. And it'll be Barcia to deliver. He goes for goal, and he misses left of the post. It's a good hit, and it had pace on it. And the goalkeeper, Troutman, certainly was frozen a second there of all those runners, and that's what the attempt was trying to do, but just didn't have the pace and the location on it. Well, with Wake Forest going down tonight, if Louisville can at least come away with a draw and a result against Syracuse on Friday, they will jump, you would think, a number of spots in the coaches' poll next Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, this is uh, prime time to start making some moves, and these big games help NCAA tournament resumes too. And that's really why it matters. I mean, tonight matters solely for the NCAA tournament, RPI, seeding. Obviously, it has no bearing on where the cards will finish in the ACC or their positioning in the conference tournament. But now this team has aspirations of going deep in the NCAA tournament. And to do that, historically, it's important to host games. Oh, absolutely. You've got to be a team that uh, has that opportunity, and you've got to get the, the home crowd behind you. And right now, Louisville sitting at number eight in the RPI. That's a really good spot to be with some big games coming up and some golden opportunities to push even higher up in the rankings. There's Fred Hall, flips it over to Road. Nice interplay there between Sample Road and Fred Hall, and now Bacuzo out wide for Makumba Ba. Ba flips it ahead. Kamara pins it in, and the cards break the scoreless tie. Ten minutes into the second half. Well, that is just a testament to patience there for Louisville as Evansville upset here. I believe they thought that there was an offside flag that needed to go up. It's unclear what the argument is, but. Makuba Ba tried the shot first, stuck with it, scoops it in. And I'll tell you what, I think that's brutal for Amick because I'm pretty sure he's thinking his defender there, Vila, was going to get contact to it. He came out with his arms open, and that allowed the ball to sneak past him. And, of course, Abu Kamara is not going to score a simpler goal in his career than that one. Marshall Ray, the head coach, for Evansville and some of his players, including Barcia, who has just issued a yellow card, insistent that there should have been an offside flag. It did not come up. Kamara, his first goal in four matches, and it gives Louisville a one goal lead. Well, it's always difficult when you've been playing so well as a goalkeeper, regardless of the flag situation here and the argument to have it go loose like that on you and, and he just was trying to come off his line as we get another look at it here Matt 
he tried the shot first. It's blocked. And yeah, he's, he's not offside. I'm not sure what the argument was. Perhaps they were looking for a foul there, contact with the keeper. Yeah, I'm but not sure. But to me, sure. that looked like a 50-50 yeah. ball. He, he never had possession of it there. It was not a clear uh, knocking loose of the ball. That, if you're Kamara, I mean, that's a really smart play to just keep with the ball and just get your body in a position where if it's a deflection, it can happen like that, and it ends up in the back of the net. But you feel for Amick because I think he was a little bit screened by his own defender there after trying to do the right thing and come off his line. And he's played such a terrific game. Excellent. I mean, the excellent first 45 game. minutes, he made four saves. Three of them were excellent. Two of them probably, you know, goal-saving saves where he was really stretched. And that one just sort of ticky-tacky. Loose ball. Kamara puts it away. He has such a nose for goal. Now Diaz mm. and punched away by Amick. Diaz put a little venom on that shot from a tight space, and it required a really good save. Speaking of Amick making good saves, look at this. Don't underestimate how difficult this is. That has some venom. It's starting to dip toward the near post, and that's a reaction shoulder height save there, but he had to have strong hands. <laughs> Amick's earning his keep tonight in his first college start as a redshirt freshman out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Now the sixth corner of the night. It's out of Kevich. Headed on by LaBelle and down by Josh Jones wide of the post. That was nicely worked by Louisville to get Jones a second header there. And Evansville's got to kind of ride this wave here for a second and see if they can prevent that second goal. But I'll tell you what, Matt, that, that penalty is just looming very mm. large right now if you're the Purple Aces. Well, Nacho Diaz, the man who was subbed off just before the penalty was awarded, now comes back on for the first time. Leads the club with seven goals in ten matches. And Nikozi Graham, who provided a spark through the first 20 minutes of the first half, he is now back on. Two men to keep an eye on, seven and 20 in purple. You're right, Jeff. Such a good point. That penalty opportunity, a chance for Evansville to go up 1-0. They don't do it, and now they're chasing the match here in the final 30. Yeah, chasing a match in which that penalty really is the only chance that they've truly had. They had one shot, kind of a last gasper, just before halftime that hit the roof of the net, but otherwise it's just been pretty bleak getting forward for, for Evansville. Now a run from Akumba Ba. He's got wingers. Nico Diaz stays with it. Chipped it ahead for Abu Kamara. And nobody home as Kamara tried to chip it back across the mouth of goal. And I believe it'll be a Louisville corner. As Damian Barker, John, who had a couple of looks early, checks back on. And Makumba Ba will come off. And this is... This is difficult for any opponent when you can bring on these weapons like this and just continue to push your opponent with different levels of pace and, and trickiness. Road in swinging ball and a great play by Amick. Toppling over a teammate and putting his body on the line to secure it. Immediately met by a couple of his teammates there to check on him. So these guys, these guys obviously have respect for their teammate regardless, but he has put in the type of performance that surely they're going to be giving him a lot of credit for when they're watching film back. Now Matty Walters will come on for Nico Diaz. No, it'll be for Philip Fredhall. Matty Walters, the Bowling Green State transfer. Missed the first four matches with a hammy injury. Returned against Duke and has been a pivotal sub off the bench ever since.
Now McManus will come on for Kamara. It's a hockey line change here for Fred for uh, John Michael Hayden. Kamara, though, can go to the bench knowing he's given his team a one-goal lead. Yeah, and he's stuck with it. I know sometimes it's frustrating for a player like that. He's so good at running off the back shoulders of defenders and just trying to find space. He's such a lethal finisher, but he's really played well in these 15 minutes in the start of the second half. Nice idea from Brandon McManus. Diaz in a tussle with Oliver Hald. And punched away by Arntzen. And the flag comes up. Much the chagrin of the Evansville bench. I like the spark the Purple Aces have come with. This has been a strong performance. Obviously, if the result holds, they'll be disappointed having the penalty saved. But I think for a team coming into a tough environment against a really good opponent at home, they've shown themselves well so far. Well, they've had a, a string of tough matches as well, coming off back-to-back nil-nil -back draws. As Oliver Hall gets up under his own power, it'll be Evansville ball. But Marshall Ray told us, listen, we're a bit, we're a bit disappointed coming off that Bradley match because we had the chances, one off the crossbar, one off the post. Now tonight, a penalty saved. Sort of continuing that theme of almost but not quite for this Evansville side, which returns eight starters from last year, a team that shocked everybody in the Missouri Valley Conference and made it all the way to the championship game for the first time since 2009. Yeah, and it, it, it's, it starts to get frustrating for you when you're in a little bit of a drought here. They're now into, uh, what's this, um, if my math is right, five straight scoreless halves going back to uh, those last two plus games. There's a shot from way out. And that tested Amick off the foot of Bacuzzo who scored last week against NC State. That was a BB from Bacuzzo. That is quite an effort there. It kind of came out of nowhere. Just takes a good touch, set himself up for it. He's kind of falling a little bit, but that required a solid reaction save there from Amick. Saunder Road, 10th corner of the night for Louisville. This time in, swinging ball, gets across, and Amick is there, scurrying off his line. UNC Greensboro hanging tough with Clemson, who are 2-2-1 two, two and one in the last five matches. They've slipped all the way back to 18th in the country. And UNCG scored in the 61st minute to go back ahead. It was tied 1-1 at the half. We know Might from, we see two big upsets in the yeah. ACC tonight? Well, we know from UNCG coming to Louisville, that, that's a very good team. And if you're a big boy in one of the big boy conferences and you got to play them in the opening round of the NCAA tournament. No, thank you. No way. Do not like that. They led Louisville. 1-0 yeah. after the first 45 minutes here earlier in the season. But they have some guys who are either Power 5 transfers or guys that came from programs that have made runs to the NCAA tournament in the last few years, in addition to a strong international contingent. Frankly, not unlike this Evansville team. Yeah, you've got you've to work together your rosters here. There's no shortage of talent at the D1 level in, in the United States, especially when you can go international and get some kids. It's just a matter of finding the right pieces and fitting them all together in a system that works. And UNCG has done that. Barker John, perhaps the fastest man on the Louisville roster. Gets the break started. Now Barker John, Bacuzzo. Keeps it alive for Saunder Road. 
Leads the ACC with six assists, looking to dish it off. Walters turned away by Graham. Now Bacuzzo again. Saunders Road, back post. Colasito headed it away. Now Sample. Back heel flip, Diaz with space. Turned it back to his left foot, and Amick is there to clean it up. Yeah, that, that to me is an opportunity to hit it with your right and try to drag it across the frame there, but that was some really good stuff from Louisville, starting with the Barker-John combo play there to, to basically scoop up and into the area. So, Constantinos Jorgalides awaits entry. Started the match, and he is somebody who can create magic. We've seen that a time or two. Three goals and a pair of assists this season. Nifty touch there from Walters. Eh, just bended it out of bounds ahead of Saunders Road. Louisville have been so strong at home this year. 4-1-1, one one, their lone home loss, of course, against the top five Duke team. And they are plus seven goal differential at home against opponents this season. And they've played some really tough teams. Think back to St. Louis, a top ten team in the preseason, a Seattle team picked to win the WAC. This Evansville team picked to be a contender in the middle of the pack in the MVC. Of course, UNC Greensboro played here at Louisville earlier in the year. And that's a, that's a big number to know you're confident at home, and they've been obviously very good on the road as well. But to say, hey, you're sitting eighth right now in the RPI, as we mentioned earlier, and you're zeroing in on the opportunity possibly to host some NCAA tournament games to know that you play well here. I mean, that's huge. Well, and the crowd has turned out this year for the cards as well. Saunders Road has space. And he was blocked well that time by Ethan Garvey. But you think to the years that the cards have had the deepest runs, they've been able to host NCAA tournament games here at Dr. Mark and Cindy Lynn Stadium as Barker John was oh so close again to creating a goal scoring opportunity. It's a little bit of that uh, tight space dribbling New York City kids. Having to play just uh, in tight spaces, a lot of bodies and he is not afraid. That, that thing almost had the right spin on it to come back. Just love the desire of a lot of these Louisville guys to go right at their defenders. Marshall Ray trying to figure out how he can get his team to find the equalizer. Meanwhile, Sonder Road looking for another. Back across and off the top bar. Tipped away. It was Bacuzzo again. So close to finding goal number two. Nice little pass in. It was tempting for Barker John. Good communication for Bacuzzo to say leave it. But good defending from Evansville to get at least a deflection on it. They've done a number of times tonight where their defenders have just gotten enough on it to prevent a goal scoring opportunity, or a goal I should say, uh, for Louisville. Bacuzzo can't say enough about this young man who slowly worked his way into playing a significant role off the bench here midway through the campaign. Saunders Road near post. Bacuzzo there under it, handed away by Graham. Oh, Barcia up to Nicosi Graham. Turning it back in, Graham, big tackle. Adekavich coming from behind the play and winning it back for the cards. That was expertly timed by Adukevich, and that is a guy who was a big time player for Louisville last year, starting to get back in the mix. Those are really dangerous challenges at that angle, in that position. If you get it wrong, it can end in getting sent off. But uh, he inched, he, that was a perfectly timed, inch perfect tackle there. Yeah, perfectly done there. And That's why he's back in the starting lineup at left back. Yeah. 
Really good defensive play. Talked about earlier in the match how defense was something that John Michael Hayden and his support staff emphasized so much, especially in transition. When you got Patrick Hajdukevich as your left back, it affords you the opportunity to maybe cover up some mistakes, <laughs> gain background, and the like. Yeah, they've got a lot of depth at that position, and, and Quentin Elliott has been really, really good too. Fred Hall has been great. Um, so they've just got a lot of options at outside back, and, and to be able to get a guy like Idukevich back in the mix serves a really good ball, um, but that transition defending for a team that likes to be on the front foot is really important because you've got to be able to recover against counterattacks like he just did. Evansville with 20 minutes remaining to find an equalizer and come away with a tie. Miscommunication there between Josh Jones and Troutman. Back across the mouth of goal. Jones doing well to get ahead on it. Wagner. Weaving back into the middle, defended by Matty Walters. Varela. Displaced by Bryce LaBelle. Now wide again for Wagner, the freshman. And nobody home on the service. Back to the cards. Better though from Evansville, that little flow there, there. Showing that they can get forward a little bit more, but it's just needing that extra bit of quality on the balls into the area. Eric Dankwa, the 5'6 sophomore out of Akragana, comes back on. Typically the smallest player on the pitch in stature, but you talk to John Michael Hayden, there's nothing small about his character or the way he plays or certainly his engine. Yeah, he's a really important player for Louisville. Plays box to box, good passer of the ball, not afraid to try to win the ball back with ferocity. Really important player for them. On the preseason ACC watch list, surprisingly the only player for the cards <laughs> on that preseason watch list. I think that says more about the conference than it does about the talent on this team. Yeah, well, I was going to say it. I'm laughing because now I could probably name you like five or six guys who might have <laughs> arguments for all ACC on this team. No doubt. The way they're playing. And Troutman, before it's all said and done, yeah. might be one of those guys, the way he has come into form. Well, the funny thing is, is you probably run through all, a bunch of other ACC teams. You'd be like, yeah, those, <laughs> those five or six guys could probably be on the team too. I do not envy the voters. Louisville in search of its seventh straight match without a loss. That would be the longest such streak since 2017. John Michael Hayden told us at the beginning of the year, this team is special. That we've been building and building and building to this moment. We're healthy. We've got the players we want in the places we want them. I mean, you've got the Big Ten, one of the best Big Ten goal scorers two years ago, and Ugo Achara transferred over from Northwestern. We haven't even seen him yet tonight. Yeah, they've got a lot of talent and, and guys who are coming back off of injuries at the right time. And that's going to just keep adding to the depth here. And games like this 
have been, you know, this has not been a, a walk in the park by any stretch, but it's also a good opportunity midweek to mix some of those guys in and get their legs some, some work. And probably more importantly, get their minds some work mm -hmm. of, of having to work through tough situations and game at game speed. Oh, it's interesting. Louisville in a stretch of Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday, Friday against some really tough opponents. Evansville tonight, number five Syracuse on Friday night. The next Tuesday, ETSU out of the South, out of the SoCon, and then a date with Clemson. A team that spoiled their chances of sole possession of division champs a season ago. Here is Constantinos Jorgalides on the restart. Final 15 minutes here in Louisville. And Jones just over the top bar, got a head on it, and was an inch away from giving Louisville a two-goal cushion. Well, you always know where he is on set pieces. It's just a matter of can you even attempt to mark him there. And look at the tracking by him to go up there and go into battle with the goalkeeper. Two defenders lost him. And that's something that's innate, the ability to lose a marker in that situation. Louisville above their season average in shots per game. Not unlike what we saw last year when these two teams met at Louisville outshot the Aces by 15, but didn't find the equalizer and the game winner until the final few minutes of the match. This one more controlled. Looking for win number eight tonight for the top, for the number 11 team in the country, rather. Jorgalides. Bacuzo wanted a handball. Now Bacuzo! No, it was Brandon McManus putting it home for the cards, and it's a two-goal cushion. What a shot. There's not a whole lot that young Landon Amick could do about that. That is just power, placement. I mean, that's a training pitch. How did he do that finish? That is an electric goal. And the celebration to fit what was an incredible effort. You try to replicate that in FIFA all the time. It's really hard. <laughs> I'm gonna pull the R1 trigger there to get the curl on it but that was just wow that is pure class from McManus and one of the best goals we've seen scored at Lynn Stadium well he had to tie his running mate <laughs> Abu Kamara who picked up his fourth goal of the season now McManus has his fourth and that was scintillating mm. Sports Center top 10 esque from Brandon McManus who has come into his own as a goal scorer this year for the Cards. Remember, he transferred over last year from Kentucky. Couldn't quite figure out where he fit in and took his game to another level in the offseason when you talk to John Michael Hayden. It is paying dividends during the regular season. I can't get over that, man. That, that is just an electric, an electric finish. That's, wow. But now an opportunity for the third. Quentin Elliott fresh onto the pitch. Out for a corner kick.
In the corner, Blake Hartle, number 27, Constantinas Yorkalinas. Second most corners in a match this year tonight against Evansville. Louisville now with their 13th. Punched away by Amick. Final 12 minutes. Evansville in desperation mode. That was an, another really good play from Bacuzo, by the way, sliding in just to get a toe poke on it. I've been really impressed with him tonight. Bacuzo on the end of that service in from McManus. All right, so barring anything crazy, Louisville goes to 8 2 and 2. And they eye a date with Syracuse on Friday night. I'm ready for it. I'm and that, for, for all it. intents and purposes, will be for the division. Jeez. Because Syracuse has already beaten Clemson this year. I am here for that. Going to be probably in the 50s at that point. So it's supposed to be a beautiful up. day out. I'm ready for it. You going to boil your scarf? Whew. I might bring the hot chocolate. Gloves? Uh, that might be a little. That might be stretching it. Okay. That's a, that's probably a bridge too far for for old Jeff. But <laughs> maybe a sweater, hand warmer or two. We'll see. We'll save the gloves for the NCAA tournament. <laughs> there you go. I'll just bring them and leave them here so that I can. Perfect. Have them. We'll get you a cubby out back. <laughs> What's been most impressive to you just about the way that Louisville has managed this match and now taken a two goal lead? in the closing 10 minutes. Well, I mean, the, the, the persistence was, it was a big part of it because they knew that, look, Amick has been awesome today. And, he, and that two goals conceded does not take away from how well he has played as a couple substitutions come on for both teams. But uh, they were persistent. They were able to chase down the first goal. And I think that just allowed them to start playing with a little bit more freedom. Uh, but the class and the quality that this team has, the depth that they have, you bring a guy like Brandon McManus in off the bench and he can deliver a finish like that is, uh, that's hard to beat. The thing that stands out to me is the maturity of this team. You know, maybe in a game like this last year, Louisville unable to find that that touch at the end, and certainly that second goal to put the team away. Young, lots of pressure, and John Michael Hayden's third season, they ultimately get to the NCAA tournament, falling in the first round. I mean, there is a hunger and a focus about this team this year. There is, and, and they've just, I, I think what they know is you're not trying to just change the 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 way things are going with the same guys on the field, now you've got so many different ways you can change a game. So in, just for a few positions, as an example, if Ba and, and Kamara and you know Diaz or whoever is starting out on the right-hand right, hand, right hand side are struggling, you can roll in Damian Barker, John, you can roll in McManus, you can roll in all these different guys who are equally as dangerous, and it's uh, George Alitas. I mean, it, it, the list is long, and that's just up front. So it's it's a good mix for this group. There goes Brandon McManus after one of the coldest, <laughs> nastiest goals we've seen in this 2022 regular season. Might holding, be the best. Yeah, he was holding up his hand like, give me a call. I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> hey. That's the type of uh, celebration you deserve when you get uh, a finish like that. 
Well, now he, Jorgalides, and uh, Abu Kamara tied for the team lead with four goals. Who's your pick for the end of the season to lead everyone? Oh, man, that's tough. I mean, I, I, I'm still always going to go with Kamara. That dude is just such an elite one-touch, quick hip swivel, run into a small amount of space and finish type of striker. You just got to figure there's a couple more in his account to be uh, deposited this year. Matty Walters zips it to Diaz, plays it across the mouth of goal, looking for Makumba Ba. And out it goes for an aim at goal kick. Here are your Louisville goals tonight. It started with Abu Kamara. Yeah, just good old fashioned stick to it of this. Tough break for Amick, thinking maybe his defender was going to get there, and then that. I mean, Brandon McManus, are you kidding me with that finish? Little curl to it, little venom. Beat just about any goalkeeper in the world with a shot like that. Safe to say he made the right move coming over from UK. He seems to have found a place that he is, he is thriving in, yes. And especially this year. Yeah, I mean, we did not great. see this Brandon McManus a season ago. Yeah. The confidence, the bravado. And the boldness to take a shot like that, yeah. let alone make it. Yeah, that, that's a great description of him. I mean, he, you know, we knew that last year he would come on. You knew that it would get a little spicy. You knew that he was going to play with a, a little ferocity, a little anger, um, in a good way, I mean. But, uh, but this year he's added that little extra uh, something to his game of, of looking just so confident, like you said, the, the, the courage and the ambition to try a shot like that. Just shows you where he has gotten to. There is Diaz, got two runners. Ba, now Kamara coming into the mix. Oh, and that almost snuck in, had it not been for a last minute diving save by Amick. And a last second recovery there. He, again, kudos to Landon Amick. A couple of times now, his reactions have been obscenely good for a young guy who had only played seven minutes coming into this game. Wow. I mean, that was way too close for comfort if you're Evansville, and it would have been an own goal because it was deflected off Amick's own defender. I hope that they uh, that they take their guy out after this as Sonda Road almost comes across and scores. I, they got to take their guy out. Get him a burger. Get him. Get him some fries. He has earned himself. And not. And not. Don't order off the dollar menu. Okay. Let's go out and let's do ourselves. Do it right. Huh? Do it right. Get your guy a nice juicy burger. Maybe a little Louisville yeah. barbecue. Love that. There you go. Load him up. Load him up. He has earned a meal tonight. A big time meal on the house. For his performance, that is surely going to give Marshall Ray. A lot of excitement about the future of this Evansville program, knowing they've got that goalkeeper as an available option. Thought, oh, yeah, we'll get him into the starting lineup maybe next year, the season after. No sir. Sprung into action tonight as a redshirt freshman with seven minutes of experience. After Vitazzoni was ejected from the match against Bradley due to a red card. And he has been terrific tonight. Meanwhile, on the other side for Louisville, Troutman had a few things to think about in the first half, but Louisville's done a fantastic job of keeping the ball away from anywhere near their starting keeper tonight. And yeah. this will be the first time, Jeff, that Louisville has strung together three consecutive shutouts since 2017. That team did it five in a row and made it all the way to the Elite Eight Losing in a shootout to Akron. Yeah, good team back then, and that, that's elite company for this group. But defensively, they've just been so good of closing down transitions. There's a little frustration foul there, but I think Diaz was trying to actually catch his balance. 
But uh, but no, this Louisville team this year has been much more on its P's and Q's, so to speak, defensively. Now, Nacho Diaz not even close to going after the ball, obviously. And he has been booked. Oh, Kamara quick to the scene. Well, it, you know, from the angle, it looked like he got right up and was, like, trying to go at it with Elliott, but I think it actually was just him losing his balance after he got up, which is why he quickly diffused the situation. Here is Nico Diaz on the touchline. Now Matty Walters. Oh, that was a close ricochet. <laughs> And yet another Louisville corner. It'll be Saunder Road to take it in the closing two minutes of the match. I'm just laughing here because Amick just like another breath of relief there on <laughs> that deflection. And of course, upcoming, the match everyone has been waiting for, Syracuse and Louisville on Friday night on the ACC Network. Watch ESPN app, 7 Eastern. Jeff and I will be with you. Syracuse on a two-match win streak. Louisville on a three-match win streak. Seven in a row without a loss. This is, for all intents and purposes, for the division on Friday night. I'm going to send you a calendar invite. We're going to put a reminder, two hours, one hour, 15 minutes. Set your phones, be ready, because that is something you do not want to miss. What a matchup. Old Big East rivals from back in the day going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a lot on the line late in the season. And historically, at least in recent history, those matches have been electric offensively. Multiple goals, end-to-end -end action. If you like offense, make sure you set your calendar 7 p.m., tune in, Louisville-Syracuse, essentially a top-10 matchup at the back end of the ACC slate. I'm a huge fan of goals, Matt, so that, sign me up. I'm in. I don't think you have a choice, Jeff. You're already <laughs> on the schedule. Louisville gets it done tonight against a tough Evansville side. Abu Kamara will run it out. He broke the scoreless tie. In the second half, and then it was a ridiculous shot by Brandon McManus. John Michael Hayden's team, their third consecutive shutout, most since 2017. Your final thoughts.